profit. All right. Market value is cost plus profit. So when manufacturing profit is added to either cost of production or cost of complete production, it becomes market value. All right. And yesterday I made it known to you that goods can be transferred to the warehouse based on market value or cost. All right. Cost, I'm sorry, goods can be transferred to warehouse based on market value or cost. Right. And we discussed, we also discussed the format for the format of manufacturing account. We got to realize that under the format, we have direct materials, all right? Or with direct materials, we prepare to ascertain the cost of materials consumed. So we have direct material, and then we add direct wages. All right, an example of direct wages is the factory wages. Then and then we add direct um, expense or royalties, all right? And we all know that summation of all direct elements will give us direct, I'm sorry, summation of all direct production elements will give us prime cost. So we have direct material, direct wages, direct expense, all right? And we sum them up, we get prime cost. And we add overheads and the overheads too, we have indirect material, we have indirect labor, we have indirect expense, all right? We have overheads, we have time cost, and we sum up, we get cost of production, all right? So start getting your cost of production. If you're giving work in progress at the beginning, at the end, we add the opening work in progress, the less closing work in progress, and that gives us cost of complete production, all right? And if you are giving manufacturing profit, we add that as well to get market value. We add manufacturing profit to get market value. And um, please, is there any question? Okay. Is there any question? All right. So if there is no question, um, I hope you can always see my writing part. Please respond. Yes, sir. Very good. Very good. So um, yesterday we got to realize that in manufacturing firms, most of the times they have two buildings, all right? They have the manufacturing site, or they have building for production, which is termed as um, factory. Uh, someone's hand it up. Um, sir, please, can you go over why you have to add the opening WIP to the cost of production and then less it to get the cost of complete production? Very interesting. Yes. Wow. Uh, okay. So we add opening the BIP because you see, opening the BIP is a BIP from the previous period, all right? And um, for example, yesterday um, I used preparation of or making of sobolo as an example, all right? So if if we are preparing sobolo or if we are manufacturing sobolo and we have some of the mixture left yesterday. All right, when that mixture left yesterday is transferred to today for today's production or for today's complete production, we would first fill bottles with the mixture from yesterday. All right, and we know mixture from yesterday to be the opening work in progress. All right, so if you want to know complete production for today, we have the mixture from yesterday being filled into bottles. All right, plus the current production we did today also been filled into bottles. So we have bottles filled with yesterday's mixture and we have bottles filled with today's mixture. All right. But then at the end of the day, if we have closing inventory of work in progress, you see closing inventory of work in progress would still be in the bowl. All right. And would not be classified as part of complete production. So if you want to know complete production, you have cost of production, you add opening 
work in progress, we less going to work in progress. Is it fine now? Yes, thank you. Um, so with the manufacturing friends, we have um factory here. All right. And when goods are manufactured or when goods are produced, they are transferred to warehouse. We have warehouse here. Mm -hmm. So goods are produced here and they are transferred here. All right. So here we have inventory, all right? And after producing the inventory, you transfer the inventory to the warehouse based on I. We can have cost, all right, and II, we have market value. All right, we have cost and we have market value. So let's say at the end of today, we have, um, or at the end, yeah, at the end of the period, we have goods produced, all right, we have finished goods, all right, and after producing the finished goods, you wouldn't sell finished goods at the factory site, all right, you would transfer the finished goods. So we have the finished goods in this vehicle, all right? So we transfer finished goods to the warehouse, right? And the, when the finished goods get to the warehouse, we then sell the finished goods to wholesalers, all right? We sell finished goods to wholesalers, and wholesalers will sell to retailers, all right? And retailers will sell to final consumers. So we have warehouse, we have wholesalers, we have retailers, and we have final consumers. All right. But as a firm, you see, our, our buildings are the factory and the warehouse, right? So after transferring goods from factory, it comes to warehouse, right? So we are only interested in selling goods to wholesalers. Uh, we are only interested in selling goods to wholesalers. So at the warehouse, we would recognize sales. At the warehouse, we recognize sales, all right, because that is where trading activities take place. Right? That's where trading activities take place. So when goods are transferred based on cost, the cost here would be the cost of goods in the, in the warehouse. When goods are transferred based on market value, the market value would be the cost of goods in the warehouse. All right. But we know that market value is cost plus what? Cost plus profit. All right. Even though there is no, we've not sold goods yet, but then we have profit in the market value. All right. But in accounting, we all know that we, we recognize um, we recognize profit or recognize revenue when sales are made, all right? So if, you, if you've not earned yet, we don't recognize, all right? Because our cruel concept makes us know that we only recognize revenue when it ends, not when cash is received, all right? We recognize revenue when it ends. So if you've not sold any goods, we don't recognize revenue at all. All right, but here lies the case where we have goods being transferred based on cost plus profit. Goods are transferred based on cost plus profit. So let's say at the beginning of the period, we had goods in the warehouse from the previous year. All right, so we have goods here, which is the opening or which is the closing, or which was closing inventory for the previous year. All right, and closing inventory for previous year would be opening inventory for this year. All right, and at the end of this year, we produced goods and we added up to the goods we had at the beginning of the period. So we have this goods, which is the opening inventory at the beginning of the period. All right, and in the course of the period, we added the current production. All right, so current production here is the cost of production plus opening inventory of WIP minus closing inventory of WIP, all right? Or let's say current complete production, all right? So here we have the opening inventory and then you would add the cost of, so this is the cost of current complete production, 
right? We have cost of current production here. All right, so this is current complete production, all right? And we've got to know that current complete production can be transferred based on either cost or market value, all right? It can be transferred based on cost or it can be valued at cost or market value, where market value is cost plus profit, all right? Where market value is cost plus profit. So now in the warehouse, we have opening inventory, which is the goods from the previous year. And then we have the goods, we have the current production, which is either transferred based on cost or market value, All right? Which is transferred based on cost or market value, All right? So now we have these in the frame. We have these goods in the frame, All right? And we have to sell goods to where um, to wholesalers, right? And we all know that using the first in first out method, you would first sell the opening inventory, right? You would first sell the opening inventory before coming to what? Before coming to the current production, right? As we did for the work in progress. So with the work in progress, we would first sell or we would first complete the opening work in progress. All right, so you complete the um, the um, um, the unfinished production from the previous year first. All right, before we think about producing or before we think about any additional production. All right, so here too, we would first sell the opening inventory of complete production. All right, and then we would add up that of the current production, and current production are transferred based on cost or what. Market value. All right. If it's based on cost, there is no manufacturing profit. So if it's based on cost, you see here, after selling, um, after selling um, the opening inventory, the cost of opening inventory will form part of the cost of um, of the cost of current sales or current cost of sales. All right. So here we have opening inventory. After selling opening inventory, the cost of opening inventory would form part of cost of sales, all right? And after selling the current production, the cost of current production too would form part of cost of sales, all right? And at the end of the period, we would be interested in knowing our profit. And if you want to know profit, we have cost, so we have revenue and then we less cost. We have revenue and then we less expenses, all right? So at the end of the period, we have sales, but we would sell goods, right? And when goods are sold, let's have our currency sign here. We have sales, all right? So let's say we have our sales figure here, all right? And when we and it, when it goes to the cost of sales, if you have a cost of sales, we are opening inventory, all right? We have the cost of opening inventory sold, all right? Plus the cost of current production. So we have opening inventory. So the cost of opening inventory regarded as, regarded as part of cost of sales. And then we add cost, um, cost of production, all right? So we add cost of production if there is no WIP in the manufacturing account, all right? Or cost of complete production if you are giving WIPs, all right? So we add, um, um, we, we make a cost of production when there is no WIP, all right? And we make a cost of complete production when you are giving opening and closing WIPs. So we have the figure here, all right? So initially we had opening inventory in the firm, all right? And in the course of the period, we had goods transferred from the factory, so we have, now the goods in the firm will be this plus that, right? And this plus that will give us the cost of complete story. The cost of, yeah, you can see cost of complete production available for sale, right? Or cost of finished goods available for sale. All right, so we have this in the firm and we added this. But then in the course of the period, the owner can take some, the owner can take some of the finished goods, all right? So if the owner takes from the firm, he less 
FG. FG is finished booth, right? We left FG drawing. And we have done here. We left FG drawing. In the course of the period, or at the beginning of the period, we have boost in the firm. In the course of the period, we added additional goods, right? And then we left FG drawing. Right. And that will give us the cost of goods, that's cost of finished goods available for sale. So you have cost of finished goods available for sale here. All right. And please know that it is done this way when goods are transferred based on cost. All right. So when goods are transferred based on cost. Right. So when goods are transferred based on cost, you have opening inventory. We add the cost, all right, and the cost it can be cost of production or cost of complete production, all right. So opening inventory, we add cost, all right. We left um less finish um drawings of finished goods if any, all right, and then we get cost of goods available for production. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Cost of finished goods available for sale, all right, and then we less. Let's closing inventory. All right. Let's close in inventory. We then get our cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold here. And if you are giving any direct wages, you um, can have wages. All right. Or any direct trading expense. We add that as well to get cost of sales. And then we less cost of sales from sales. And that will give us gross profit. All right, so then or if goods are transferred based on cost, we have sales, and the cost would be the cost or would form part of cost of sales. All right, so we have goods in the firm here at the beginning of the period, and in the course of the period, we transferred goods to the firm, all right, or we transferred goods from the factory to the warehouse. So let's say the cost of the period. We sold the open, we sold all the opening inventory, right? And for the cost here, we sold um we sold this session. We sold this session, all right. So after selling this session, we still have some of the goods left in the frame. All right, and the goods left in the frame here is termed as closing inventory. All right, the goods left in the frame here is termed as closing inventory. All right, and it forms part of the parent production, not the opening inventory. All right, it forms part of the current production. So this session is goods on sold. All right, this session is part of the market. Sorry, it's part of the current production on sold. So we subtract that here. All right, we subtract that and we get cost of goods. We add wages, we get cost of sales. The less from sales, you get what gross profit. All right. So when goods are transferred based on cost, this is how it's done. But when they are transferred based on market value, when they are transferred based on market value, you see here we have what the profit element. All right. And in accounting, we only recognize profit when sales are made. Accounting you recognize profit only when sales are made. All right. So here we have our warehouse. And in this warehouse, we have opening inventory at the beginning of the period. All right. So this is the opening inventory at the beginning of OI, opening inventory. And in the course of the period, we transfer goods. In the course of the period, we transfer goods based on market value. We have goods transfer based on market value. So these are the goods in the firm. All right, based on market value. All right, so in all, we have opening inventory plus market value in the firm. All right, so if you want to know the cost of goods available, you have opening inventory and then we add what market value. But please note that market value is profit inclusive. 
it is cost plus profit. All right. So here, after sales, when goods are transferred based on market value, after sales, you would have sales here. Oh, we have our currency sign here. All right, and we have sales. We have our sales figure here. All right, and then we less cost of sales. We less cost of sales. And the cost of sales, we have OI, which is opening inventory. All right, and then we add market value here. All right, and we all know that market value is cost plus profit. Okay, so we add market value. And then if there is any finished goods drawings, we less to so less FG drawings. So we less it and then we get cost of finished goods available for sales. All right, so we get or we have the figure here. We have the figure for cost of finished goods available for sales here. So we have this to add market value, we less this. We get this here, all right? And then we less placing inventory. So we have a closing inventory together. Less closing inventory, we get cost of goods So and then we add any other um, expense, example, wages, all right? We add wages and then we get cost of sales. Less cost of sales from sales, we get gross profit. All right, <clears throat> and <clears throat> after getting a gross profit, you see here goods are transferred based on market value, which is cost plus profit. All right, so after transferring goods, um, um, after transferring goods value at cost plus profit, we have gross profit here. All right. And after sales, we are to recognize the manufacturing profit as part of our profit, or as part of our revenues. All right, so we are sales, all right, and we added market value as cost here. So after getting a gross profit, we add, we add what? Manufacturing profit. So we add manufacturing profit back, all right? Or we create manufacturing profit as other income. So this income is from manufacturing. So this manufacturing profit here is from manufacturing. It is not from sales, all right? But we only recognize manufacturing profit when sales are made. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, sir. Hello, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We recognize, yes, manufacturing, we recognize manufacturing profit when sales are what when sales are made. All right. But then you see with this particular format, and then in the period, they still have some of the producing inventory in the warehouse. All right. And the section of inventory left after sales wouldn't be the opening inventory. It would be part of what would be part of market value. All right, it would be passed. So let's add it um, at the end of the day or at the end of the period. The opening inventory here is what is sold. All right, and a, a session of market value to is sold. So we have inventory on sold, and the inventory on sold forms part of the market value, or inventory on sold is valued at market value, which is cost plus profit. And at the end of the period, after sales. We have to recognize what the manufacturing profit as part of our sales. But then the manufacturing profit here is added to the whole market value, all right? Or it's added to the current production. And if at the end of the period, we still have some of the goods left, then it means we have a section or we have a section of manufacturing profit which is not recognized or which is not very, um, realized, true or false. Sure. sure. Very good. All right, because we transfer goods based on market value. All right, and when goods are transferred based on market value, it means we have a profit element in the goods transfer. All right. So, and 
in accounting, you only recognize revenue or profit after what? After sales. We only recognize revenue after sales. Uh, and prudence concept tells us that we shouldn't anticipate for revenue, but we have to anticipate for what? For losses. Losses. So when goods are not sold, we don't anticipate for revenue. When goods are not sold, we don't make provision for revenues. All right. So here we transfer goods based on market value. And if at the end of the period we still some, we still have some of the goods left, then it would be prudent enough to make provision for unrealized profit. All right. And unrealized profit is the profit on the closing inventory of finished goods at the end of the period. Sorry. Hmm. Is the closing is the profit on closing inventory of finished goods, right? Or is the profit on inventory of finished goods at the end of the period? Please, I hope you are all following. Yes, please. Yes, please. Very good. Very good. All right. So we have we add manufacturing profit. All right. And please note that. Whenever you are giving, um, whenever you are giving manufacturing profit, let's say X percent, and closing inventory of finished goods. Whenever you are giving manufacturing profit and closing inventory of finished goods. It will be prudent enough to make provision for unrealized profit, right? Because these finished goods here have certain elements of unrealized or have certain elements of profit in it, right? And since they are not yet sold, since they are not yet sold, we wouldn't be able to realize profit on it, right? We only realize profit when sales are made. Or when revenue is earned. When revenue is not earned, we don't calculate the profit. We don't realize the profit. All right. So whenever you are giving manufacturing profit and closely went to a finished goods, the first thing to do is to calculate for unrealized profit. All right. So at the beginning of the period, you will make provision for unrealized profit. You would anticipate that at the end of the period, you have unrealized profit to be less than 500. All right, and at the end of the period, you would then calculate for unrealized profit. All right, so when you calculate for unrealized profit, we would we would match, all right, or we compare the unrealized, the calculated unrealized profit to the what, to the anticipated unrealized profit. So we have anticipated unrealized profit and we have calculated unrealized profit. All right, so we have provision for on realized profit at the beginning of the period, all right, to be let's say X. And at the end of the period, we would calculate on realized profit, all right? So that would be on realized profit of let's see Y. So we have on realized profit at the beginning, all right? And at the end of the period, we calculate for on realized profit on the closing inventory. All right, so we anticipated that, or let's admit it, we anticipated that, let's say, we anticipated that you would have unrealized profit to be high found. All right, at the beginning of the period, we anticipated that you have unrealized profit to be high found. All right, and if at the end of the period, you have unrealized profit to be 3,000, has there been an increase in unrealized profit or a decrease? Or is there an income or a loss? But at the beginning of the period, we anticipated that we would have unrealized profit to be 5,000. At the end of the period, we have unrealized profit to be 3,000. So has there be an income or an expense or a loss? The income decrease, the so income. Decrease an income. Very good. All right, we have, now we have additional profit. Because at the beginning of the period, we anticipated that 5,000 of our profit wouldn't be recognized, all right? So at the end of the period, the unrealized profit is only 3,000. 
right? So going forward, we would decrease unrealized profit or we would decrease provision for unrealized profit. So now provision for unrealized profit is what? Will be 3,000, all right? And the difference which is 2,000 will be added back to profit, all right? Because the 2,000 is now recognized. All right, so the 2,000 will form part of the realized profit. All right, and unrealized profit would be only 3,000. So we treat increase in unrealized profit. So this is decrease in unrealized profit, all right? So decrease in unrealized profit is treated as income. So here we have decrease in unrealized profit to the 2,000. All right, and this 3,000 will be treated as income. All right, and the finished goods left, the finished goods left in the firm or the closing inventory of finished goods. The closing inventory of finished goods after the end of the year will be reported in the SOFP as market value less what provision of unrealized profit or less unrealized profit. All right, so let's say here we have finished goods amounting to 1,000, 10,000, all right? In the SOFP, when you get to finish goods session or you get to close an event of finished goods session, you would have finished goods or closing I, CI of finished goods of 10,000, and then you will less URP of, of 3,000. All right, and our cost will be seven thousand. All right, this is because we keep closing inventory based on either cost or sorry, we treat closing inventory based on less cost or net realizable value. We don't keep inventory based on sales value or based on market value. We keep inventory based on cost or realizable value, all right? So if the cost is less than the realizable value, you keep inventory based on cost, all right? If the realizable value is less than cost, you keep it based on the net realizable value, all right? Or we keep inventory based on cost, not on market value, all right? So if you have to keep inventory based on cost, then you would have to subtract, or you would put them to subtract the unrealized profit on the inventory to get cost. All right, because inventory are transferred, or because with this particular instance, the inventory is transferred based on market value. But if inventory is transferred based on market value, the closing inventory would be valued as what market value, because the closing inventory wouldn't be part of the opening inventory. It would be part so of the so we have um um what was I even saying? So whenever you are giving manufacturing profit and closing inventory, the first thing to do is to calculate for unrealized profit. All right. So when you calculate for unrealized profit. You therefore compare the calculated unrealized profit to the anticipated unrealized profit in the trial balance. All right. So you'll be given opening provision in the trial balance, all right? And at the end of the period, you would also calculate for unrealized profit. So if there is decrease in unrealized profit, it will become an income. If there is an increase in unrealized profit, it becomes an expense. All right. And in the SOFP, we less the calculated unrealized profit from the market value of producing inventory. Please, is there any question? Hello? No, please. I'm Jessica. Thank you. And um, please, I'm sorry to bring the class back, but please, could you go over the, um, the market value again? To where you are right now, the um... market value is cost plus profit. Yes, please. market value is cost plus profit. I'm telling you that when goods are transferred based on cost plus profit, 
they would only recognize the profit after sales. So right? we only recognize profits when sales are made. But if at the end of the day, or if after sales, it still has person of goods left, the profit on that goods is not to be recognized because sales have not been made yet. All right. So therefore, it would be prudent to make provision for realized profit. All right. And I said, and I said that when you are giving um, a question with manufacturing profit and closing event of finished goods, it would be prudent or wise enough to calculate for for the first thing to do is to charge or yeah, is to find the profit on the finished goods. All right. If, when you are giving manufacturing profit and closing inventory, the first thing to do is to charge or is to find the profit on the closing inventory of finished goods. All right. And so, sir, please, how do you do that? Do you use the manufacturing profit percentage? That's all. Okay. All right. So let's say you've been given, let's say we have, um, let's say we have closing inventory at the end of the period to be 50,000, all right? And we have manufacturing profit to be 10%. What would be the value for unrealized profit? 5,000. No, it wouldn't be 5,000. It wouldn't be 5,000. Please note that the closing inventory is valued at market value. And market value is profit increasing. All right. So the uh, unrealized profit will be 10 over the closing inventory is based on market value. And market value is cost, which is 100% plus profit, which is what? 10% times the market value, which is 50,000. Please, I hope I'm making sense. Please, can you go over why is it 100 over 10? You said the 100 is for the 10%. I, and then they... It is 100 over 10 because market value is cost plus profit. And cost is 100%. Profit is 10%. So if you are to determine the profit on the market value, it would be the profit divided by 100% plus 10 times the market value, all right? We, you see, from the beginning, we calculated the profit on cost. We calculate profit on cost of complete production, all right? So the 100%, so the 10% is on cost, all right? And after getting the cost, sorry, after getting the profit, we added the profit to the cost of complete production to get market value, all right? So the percentage for market value the percentage for MV is 100% plus manufacturing profit percent. The percentage for market value is 100% plus manufacturing profit percent, all right? And you all know that closing inventory is valued at market value. So if it's valued at market value, then, Profit on the closing inventory would be the manufacturing profit percent divided by 100% plus MP percent, all right? And then you multiply by our closing inventory figure. Any question? Uh, please, so that means cost is always 100%. Oh, yes. That's when, when profit is calculated and cost. All right, if you are to calculate profit on cost, we would regard cost as what 100%. Any question? Are there other instances where you don't have to calculate profit on cost? With this particular or with um, um with this um, particular instance or with manufacturing, you would have your cost, all right. You would know, you get to know the cost involved in manufacturing the item or producing the item. Now, for getting your cost, you would therefore calculate profit on the cost. All right. I'm saying if you are to calculate profit on cost, you would regard the cost as 100%. All 
if there is no cost, you cannot calculate profit. You will only calculate profit when you are giving the cost price. All right. When you have the cost price, you add up your cost to get market value. Is it okay now? Hello? Yes, it's okay. All right. Sir, please, can there be an instance where the cost is less than 100%? Mm. If you are to charge or if you are to calculate profit on cost, the cost cannot be less than 100%. If you are to calculate profit on cost, cost would be 100%. All right, because if you are to calculate on cost, you have six on. I say it means we are dividing the Hello, please, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Very good. So um, um, this is the format of my factoring account, right? So after getting your market value, after getting your market value, you move towards trading account. So we have three. Mm -hmm. And under trading, we have sales. Uh, right. So we would create a column here. Can we see them? All right. And our sales figure would come here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sales figure would come here. All right. And the less. Less cost of sales. All right. So the cost of sales, we have opening inventory. All right. And we have our opening inventory here. And then we add, or we add market value. All right, Plus, when goods are transferred based on market value, we add market value. If it's based on cost, we add the cost. We add market value here, all right? And if there is any finished goods drawings, yes, we left empty drawings. Oh, we left FG drawings and we have a cost of FG. Please, FG is finished good. A cost of FG available for production. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not for production, but available for, for sale. All right, and we have our figure here. Very good. And then we left closing inventory. 
Let's close the inventory. We now have a cost of goose suit. Uh, cost of goose suit. All right. And if you are given any direct trading expense, for example, wages, you add that as well. You add wages, if any. Right. So we add that. And then we get our cost of goods figure, right? And we have to subtract the cost of sales from sales. Cost of sales from The next profit is the same equity. Johnson. Johnson. Can you please check the person giving feedback here for me? Can you meet the person? I just meet the person. All right, thank you. You're welcome, sir. All right, please. So that's that for manufacturing income statement. Is there any question? Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, please. What about additional purchases? Additional purchases. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. All right. So um. You see, we in manufacturing firms, you manufacture goods, right? And when goods are manufactured, we transfer the goods to warehouse to be sold, right? But then in the warehouse, we can choose to outsource, right? Or we can choose to buy additional inventory. Right? So when we buy additional inventory, we add that or we classify that as part of cost of goods available for sale, right? So if there is if there is purchase of additional inventory, you would have opening inventory. That's um, um, at the trading side, 
or in the trading account without opening inventory, all right? And then we add market value, then we add additional purchases one more time. Um, where is it? 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 Start broadcast. And, um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if if you are given additional purchases, all right, you have if you have open, please have you can hear me. Yes. Hello. Very good. You see, we have opening inventory here, all right, and we have market value. So, if you are given additional, if you are given purchases or uh, additional purchases, you add that as well. All right, before lesson finish these drawings. All right, we add additional inventory and then less goods drawings. So, um, please, is there any other question? Hello. Hello. Hi. Is there any is there any question? No, please. Okay. Well, then with the statement of financial position, it takes the same format as the other ones. All right. With the SOSP, you have the you have your non-current assets. All right, you add working capital and then you get net asset, and the net asset is financed by capital, you less drawings, you add rent equity, all right, and then you add non current liabilities. All right, so that's that for manufacturing accounts. All right, just that here in the SOFP, like I told you, for Closing inventory the less calculated on realized profit. All right. For trade receivables to the less calculated provision for that for date. Uh, that is the only difference. For closing inventory, the less calculated on realized profit. All right. And here, and the closing inventory, we have closing, we have um, closing inventory of raw material, closing inventory of indirect material, closing inventory of the VIP and what closing event to finished goods, all right? All these would be classified as current assets, right? Because they are still in the firm as at the end of the financial year. All right, so, so, so for SOFP, we have the, we have the um, non-current assets, all right? Which is cost accumulated depreciation, and then we get net book value. And then, Okay, so let me let you let me share the screen. Let me share my screen here. Um, so we have the format for SOFP here. Oh no, um, let me see. Um, um, okay. All right, so let's write up the format here. So under SOFP, please, have, I hope you can all hear me. Yes, please. Very good. So um, you have SOFP, statement of financial position, assets, all right? And then you add the date. Under SOFP, we have NC. All right, and NCA is reported based on cost less depreciation. All right, then we have our net book value, right. not forgetting the currency sign. All right, so under NCA, we have PPs. We have PPs, all right. PPs, we have costs. Yeah. 
we have um, we have cost yes we have depreciation and then we get net book value then you have intangible all right intangible intangible is reported based on the fair value when you sum up you get total c and c you get total non-current assets you have a figure here all right so that is that's for non-current assets then you move to working capital by working capital you have current assets that's c8 current assets is c and the current assets we have inventory all right and then the inventory we have um we have um, um, um raw material raw materials here we have the figure here we have wip we have we, okay so we can after raw material you can also be given indirect materials uh, indirect materials and you can have wip we have wip here right oh please i hope you are following yes sir okay, okay. and we have finished goods that's fg finished goods all right and we know that for finished goods we would have to subtract unrealized profit all right so less unrealized profit we have the figure here all right and when you less the unrealized profit from finished goods you bring the figure here so that's that for inventory and then you have trade receivables we have trade receivables and the trade receivables too we have our figure here and if we have any provision for that for debt we subtract as well subtract provision for that for debt and we have our net receivables here right then we have revenue revenue owing we have the revenue owing figure here we have expense prepaid we have expense prepaid figure here we have short-term investment short-term investment figure here we have cash at bank and we have, we have the figure here they have cash in hand all right so when you sum up all these you will get total current assets all right the less current liability and our current liabilities we have trade payables we have our figure here we have um we have um revenue prepaid all right we have the figure here we have expense That's going very good we have the figure here we have short-term loan and the last one is bank overdraft banks overdraft we have bank overdraft here as well so when you sum up the liabilities less from assets all right so less current liability from current assets and then we get working capital right and we add working capital to current non-current assets all right so we have total non-current assets here and then we have working capital here when we add we get net assets there are net assets figure here and the net assets is financed by we have capital mm -hmm. so we have our capital here then less drawings we have drawings figure here all right that give us fullness 
Так, уйти. Then we add next profit of fence equity. And that will give us total equity. So total equity or equity. Oh, oh. And then we add non current liabilities. Non current liabilities, we have long term load. We have the figure here. And when we add up, we get working capital. Sorry, we get capital employed. All right, and the capital employed figure here might be the same as the net asset figure. All right, so that's that for the SOSP. That's that for SOSP. Please, is there any question? So, please, why do we have indirect materials at current assets? Because we may have a closing inventory of indirect material. But if you have closing inventory of indirect material, it's treated as asset because it's still in the firm and it will generate benefits for the firm within one year. Any other question? Any other question, please? All right, so if you don't have questions, I have questions for you. Well, let me share my screen again. Um, I have questions for you. All right, so I hope you can see my screen. Yeah. Okay, so illustration number one, or question number one. Question number one, let's assume that we have um we have time cost oh no okay yeah let's assume that we have time cost to be um seven thousand we have overhead overhead cost to be thirteen thousand we have opening wip to be um three thousand and we have closing wip to be um four thousand five hundred all right and in additional information in additional information i we have um we've been given manufacturing profit manufacturing profit to be um 10 percent and we have closing inventory to be um let's see um 8,800, right, required. You are required to I determine the market value I, I. You have to determine, okay, so let's say in the trial balance, you've also been given Unrealized profit, that's position for unrealized profit here to be um to be 500. All right. So we determine market value and II. We have to determine increase or decrease in unrealized profit. And III we have to determine the closing the amounts of Closing inventory 
inventory of finished goods. Please kindly note that the 8,800 is closing inventory of finished goods, all right? So here, into bracket, LG. All right, so kindly determine amount of closing inventory of finished goods to be reported in the SOFD. So in this question, we've been given prime cost to be 17,000. We have overhead cost to be 13,000. We have opening WIP to be 3,000. We have collision WIP to be 4,500. And we have provision for realized profit to be 500, all right? And the additional information, we have manufacturing profit to be 10%. And closing inventory of finished goods to be 8,800. And we are required to determine the market value. We have to determine the increase or decrease in unrealized profit. And we have to determine the amount of closing inventory to be reported in the SOFP. So, um, please, what will be the cost of or the figure for cost of production? 30,000. 30,000. All right. So, solution. Solution and the solution we have, um, we will be given prime cost. We have overhead, all right? So, cost of production is 30,000, all right? And what will be the figure for cost of complete production? Mm -hmm. It will be 30,000 plus. <clears throat> Plus three thousand, all right, minus four thousand five hundred. And what will be the figure, please? Sorry, okay, my network was messing up. All right, so um, please, what did you, what's the figure for cost of complete production? 28,500. 28,500. And what would be the figure for manufacturing profit? So manufacturing profit is 10%, all right, times, 10% uh -huh. times what? Cost of complete production. And what's the amount, please? Um, that is 28,200, so it'll be 2,850. Okay, so manufacturing profit. So manufacturing profit will be 2,850. Right, good. And what will be the figure for market value? Thirty-one thousand three hundred and fifty. Very good. That's the twenty-eight thousand five hundred plus plus two eight five there. All right, and that will give you that will give you. Uh -huh. What's the figure again, please? Thirty-one thousand three hundred and fifty. Three hundred and fifty. All right, and. So that's that. So that's that for um requirement I, requirement I I. Kindly calculate for unrealized profit. Uh, so unrealized profit would be equal to ten divided by one one zero times times eight thousand eight hundred. And what will be the figure, please? What is the figure for provision for 
um, what the figure eight for calculating eight. our life? 800, very good. Eight. And we have initial provision. Initial provision is, initial provision is 500. So has okay. there been an increase or a decrease? Increase. Increase. So we have increased in our life profit. Our life profit. Don't send any meter person for me. It's 300. All right. And don't send. And in the SOFP, in the SOFP closing inventory of finished goods would be uh -huh, it would be eight thousand eight hundred minus what minus eight hundred very good minus eight hundred and that will give us eight thousand all right so. Please buy that for manufacturing account. Mm -hmm. So with manufacturing account, you will be given a trial balance plus additional information, all right? And with manufacturing account, we first have to prepare the manufacturing account itself first, all right? And then you add the trading. So, when you have or you be required to prepare a manufacturing income statement. And in the manufacturing income statement, you have the manufacturing account, you have a manufacturing section, all right? The manufacturing section is to determine the cost incurred in manufacturing, all right? And if you are given manufacturing profit, you add that as well. All right, so. When, when manufacturing profit is added, you get market value, all right? And with the trading session, you have your sales, all right? And please note that with the sales, you can also have return inward, all right? So with sales, you first less return inward, all right? And that will be your main revenue, or that will be the main revenue for the firm. We have sales less return inward, and then we less our cost of sales. The cost of sales, we have opening inventory. We add the cost of production. All right. So if if it's transferred based on cost, you have either cost of production or cost of complete production. All right. If it's based on market value, you add the market value. Uh, hello. I'm not sharing anything. I'm just um, um summarizing everything for you. So um, on the cost of sales, we have opening inventory, all right? And when goods are transferred based on cost, you add either cost of production or cost of complete production. If they are transferred based on market value, you add the market value, all right? And if we have any additional purchases, we add that as well, all right? And if you have goods drawing less, we have opening inventory, you add market value, you add additional purchases, you less goods drawing, and that gives us cost of goods available for sale. All right, and then you less closing inventory. That gives us the cost of goods sold. You add any um, trading expense. All right, that gives us cost of sales. And then you less cost of sales from either net sales or sales. And that will give us gross profit and you get gross profit we add other income and the other income we have manufacturing profit we have decrease in realized profit we have decrease in provision for doubtful debt we have discount receipt we have rent income we have interest on investment we have profit on disposal we have commission received and all all right so when you sum up you get gross income and then you less office expenses we have office office and um, stationary we have office um, rent, office electricity, office light and heat, office power, office um, 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 uh -huh. 
office lights and heat, all right? We have advertising, we have um, carriage outward, we have the decision on office equipment, all right? And oh, so when we sum up less from gross income, and that gives us our next profit, all right? And when you get next profit, you then prepare your statement of financial position. In the statement of financial position, you have non current asset. All right, and on non current asset, you have PPs or tangible non current asset. All right, and the PPs will report based on cost less accumulated depreciation. And that will give us net book value. And then you add up the intangible ones. And that will give us total non current assets. Then you add working capital. And the working capital, current assets, less current liabilities. All right. The current assets we arrange in order of liquidity. So we have inventory, we have receivables, we have revenue owing, we have expense prepaid, we have short term investment, cash at bank, and cash in hand. We sum up, we get total current assets and less current liabilities. The current liabilities, the current liabilities, we have trade payables, we have expense owing, we have revenue prepaid, we have short term loan, bank overdraft. All right, we sum up in this from current assets, we get working capital, we add working capital to total in current assets, and that gives us net assets. All right, that net asset is net asset after paying off short term liabilities. All right, and the net assets after paying off short term liabilities are financed by capital in this drawings, and that will give us the net equity, the RFM's equity, we get total equity, and then. We add non current liabilities. So the net assets in the firm are financed by capital employed. And the element of capital employed are equity and non current liabilities. If you want to know capital employed, you add equity to non current liabilities. If you want to know net assets, you have non current assets plus what? Working capital. If you want to know working capital, current assets plus current liabilities. All right, please, is there any question? Hello. Hi. Is there any question, please? No, please. All right, so if there's no question, I have questions for you. I have questions for you. Sir, please, a question. Sure. Please, does the profit form part of the owner's equity? Oh, profit, no. Profit is firm's equity. Profit is firm's equity. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question, please? Okay. So, if there is no question, um, let me share my screen again. All right. So let's see. Uh, okay. So in question number two, in question two, let's see we have. Um, we have um, time cost to be our time cost to be twenty thousand. We have overhead overhead cost to be ten thousand. We have the BYT uh, opening the BYT to be um, two thousand. We are closing the BYT to be thousand. Mm -hmm. And 
you have provision for and realize for it to be 500, all right? And the additional information, additional information is been given closing in the, uh, before closing in the uh, manufacturing process to be 12%. Uh, we have closing inventory of finished goods. To be, um, let's say, closing inventory of finished goods to be um, 6,000. Uh, so let's um, let's adjust the profit more. Let's make the profit 20%. And close now, close the event of finish goes to 6,000. All right. So you are required to prepare I or to determine I. Market value, I, I. Increase or decrease in unrealized profits and I, I, I. The amount of closing inventory to be reported in the SOFP. All right, so who is willing to take us through this question? Uh, should I mention names? Hello? Okay, so if you're not minding me, let me get people on board. All right, so, um, um, if I, if I believe family, if I, I there, if I, if I, okay, so it has been that if I is absent. Erica Nelson. Erica mm -hmm. Nelson. Okay, Erica Nelson. So you will do I and um, the Don Shaka. The Don, the Don Shaka, you vanish. <laughs> the Don Shaka, for me to yourself, you will do the I, I, and Frida Ade will do I, I, I. So Erica Nelson, kindly take us through the I. Erica Nelson, are you there? Eric Say. Sí. Please take us through the eye. Yes, sir. So kind you have to determine the market value. Uh, we are listening, please. Erica. Happy I'm coming. Erica. So, please, we have to get the cost of production first. Uh, so, what will be the figure for cost of production? Okay, so with COP, uh, what will be the cost or what will be the figure for COP? 30,000, right? Yes, sir. Sure. So, we have 30,000 here. And what will be the cost? COCP, that's the cost of complete production. Yes. Um, it will be... That's 1,000, right? Yes, it will be 31,000. 
And what would be the figure for MP manufacturing process? It will be um twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Nice. So what would be the figure? Um, eight thousand two hundred, right? Yes, yeah, six thousand two hundred. And what would you do for market value? So market value will be um thirty one thousand plus six thousand two hundred. Very good. And I'll give you 37,200. 1,200, right? yes, sir. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I, I, okay. I, I, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to calculate the realized profit and you have to also determine the increase or decrease. All right. So so it will be, it will mm -hmm. be the 20, 20 over uh -huh. one. Okay, times time. six thousand. Very good, very good. And that will give us we'll get one thousand. thousand. Thousand rather. One thousand. Okay, one thousand. Thank you very much. And so our realized profit is thousand, right? And the provision is five hundred. So yeah. is there an increase or a decrease? And there's an increase of how much? Five hundred. Very good. Thank you. Hello. Hi. I I I. I. The and so with the I, I I I, you have to you have to determine the um you have to determine the position in the entry to be reported in the All right. So the formula is the closing inventory minus the calculator the realized process. All right. And you have the closing. What is the figure for? Closing inventory is six thousand, right? And calculated the realized profit. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. So, what will be the figure for closing inventory to be reported? Five thousand. Five thousand. Thank you. Five thousand. All right. So, Johnson, please make me a co-host. All right. Johnson. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm coming, please. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, let me share this question with you. Um, All right. I hope you can all see the question. <clears throat> the yes, following balance is extracted from the books of welcome product manufacturers of building materials on the 1st December 2019. All right. And in the additional information, we have we've been given 
manufacturing profit to be 10 percent right and closing inventory of finished goods is three one four thousand and depreciation is to be 10 percent and you are required to prepare manufacturing income statement as well as statement of financial position right and like i told you whenever you are giving manufacturing profit and losing inventory of finished goods the first thing to do is to calculate for unrealized profit all right if not you would forget so please know that whenever you're giving manufacturing profit and closing inventory of finished goods calculate unrealized profit first all right so what will be the figure for unrealized profit in this question? So manufacturing profit is 10% and um, closing inventory of finished goods is 341,000. So what will be the figure for unrealized profit? What will be the figure for calculated unrealized profit? 31,000. 31,000. 31,000. Ten divided by one ten times three hundred and forty one thousand, and in the trial balance, we have we have um, unrealized profit to be forty five thousand. Right, this is unrealized profit in the trial balance, forty five thousand. All right, that's provision for unrealized profit as of first January twenty nineteen, and it is forty five thousand. All right. So is there an increase or has there be an increase or a decrease in unrealized profit? A decrease. A decrease. A decrease. Unrealized profit. Hello, is there an increase or a decrease? It's a, a decrease. decrease. A decrease of how much? 1,400. 1,400. 14,000. 14,000. 14, <laughs> and what will be the amount of closing inventory to be reported in the SOFP? What will be the amount of closing inventory to be reported in the SOFP? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Pardon? Hello. Hello, class. Can you hear me? Sir, please, we can hear you. <laughs> Sir, we can okay. hear you. Uh -huh. So kindly respond. <laughs> hmm. What is the figure for calculator that realized for? Hello. Thirty-one thousand. And what is the figure for finish and um, closing inventory of finished goods? Thirty-four thousand. What is the figure for? Uh, so what what will be the figure? What will be the figure to be reported with regards to closing inventory of finished goods? Three thousand one hundred. Three thousand one hundred. Uh, not three thousand one hundred. Three hundred and ten. Three hundred and ten thousand. Three hundred and ten thousand. Very good. Three hundred and ten thousand. Three hundred and ten thousand. Mm. So, any question? There is no question. We are through with manufacturing account. Huh? Uh, if you have any question, kindly ask me. Any question? No, please. Okay, so if there's no question.
So, Sebi, the app, which says finished goods manufactured during the period are transferred from the factory at cost plus 10%. Is that the manufacturing profit? Yes, yes, that's the manufacturing profit. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, that's the manufacturing profit. Okay. All right. So, that's that for manufacturing account. So, with manufacturing account, you prepare manufacturing account and you would add up a trading account to get net profit, right? And then you prepare the statement of financial position. Any question? Yes, please. Yeah, please, with mm -hmm. the, the fixed, the non current assets, the office equipment mm -hmm. and the furniture and fittings, they have two values. Please, is the one in brackets the actual cost? Kindly ignore the one in brackets. All right. I say, I guess it was a mistake. Ignore the one in brackets. Because with this particular question, the one in brackets is higher than, sorry, it's less than the one at the debit side. Mm. And we know that in with regards to non current assets, the cost must always be higher than the debit value. But here we have the cost being less than the net value. All right. So I think there is a mistake somewhere. So kindly ignore the figures in bracket. All right. And focus on the ones in the trial balance or the ones at the debit side of the trial balance. Okay. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? Yeah, please, did you say we are supposed to solve this question? Uh, <laughs> I've not said anything like that, but then I'll give you a sign okay. by the case of the okay. All right. Ah. Hey, Ravana, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. All right, so um, I'm through with them, so you can take the class. Okay.